Mocha for Boris Effects is an essential tool in many, if not most, visual effects workflows. It's built into After Effects, and the OFX plugin version is a must-have for node-based apps like New Confusion. While it comes with a lot of bells and whistles these days, there's really only one core feature that gives it its magic. It's Planar Tracking Engine. In this short survival guide, we'll teach you only what you need to know to become an expert at tracking in Mocha. Here's how you launch Mocha. In New Core Fusion, just add the node and click Launch Mocha UI. In After Effects, select the clip you want to track in the comp and choose Animation, Track in Boris Effects Mocha, then click the big friendly Mocha button in the Effects palette. By default, the interface launches in Essentials View, a dumbed down version of the interface. While this is fine for a lot of tasks, we're going to switch to Classic, since this gives us more options and is more compatible with older versions of Mocha. If the contrast of your footage looks off, you may want to pop back into the host application and apply a temporary color corrector just to help you see what you're tracking better. Let's start with navigation. Like After Effects, the arrow keys are used to nudge, so to move one frame forward or backward, you'll need to press Control left or right arrow on a PC, Command left or right arrow on a Mac, or just scroll the scroll wheel forward or backward. To zoom the view, hold down the Z key and drag up and down, and to pan the view, either middle mouse drag or hold down the X key and drag. To reframe, press forward slash to zoom to 100% or asterisk to zoom to fit. Those keys are next to each other on the numeric keypad. First, we'll figure out how long we need to track the shot for. Click the Set Endpoint button at the start of the track, then drag the playhead to the end of the range you want to track, and click Set Out Point. Here, we'll limit the timeline range to the frames where the van is visible. Lastly, click Zoom to In Out Points to set the timeline range. Time to track. First, choose a frame to start tracking from. Usually, the best frame to start from is one where your subject is large in frame, in focus, and has minimal motion blur. Since Mocha can track backward just as easily as forwards, it really doesn't matter where in the frame range that falls. OK, select the Create X-Spline tool and start clicking to add points around the area you're trying to track. Now, in traditional tracking tools, you only include pixels that belong to the same rigid body inside the search region. A rigid body simply means a single object whose parts don't move. For example, if we were tracking this brake light in a traditional tracker, we'd be careful not to include any of the sidewalk activity to the right of the van, since that's not part of the same rigid body as the van itself. It would be fine to include part of the white van to the left of the brake light, since that's glued to the brake light and is therefore part of the same rigid body. But that's conventional wisdom for conventional trackers. Mocha is different. It actually helps Mocha if you include a little of the surrounding area with the plane you're tracking. Mocha uses this to differentiate which pixels belong to the foreground you're trying to track and which pixels belong to the background. To complete a tracking region, right-click the mouse to indicate to Mocha that you're done adding points. That will automatically switch back to the Selection tool. If you're used to Bezier spline tools, you may be frustrated by the way the curve doesn't actually pass through the control points. It's more like the control points are pegs holding it in tension. Now, this is usually a good thing for simple Mocha shapes, since it makes it easier to move things around. But if you need more precision, just yank on the handle sticking out of a point. Pull on the handle to tighten the curve until it finally passes right through the control point, or push on the handle to ease the curve even more than the default. There are just a few controls you really need to worry about when tracking. The first is the kind of movement. If your tracked surface is changing in perspective, which typically means it's turning relative to camera during the shot, Enable Perspective Tracking. Otherwise, you can usually leave it at the defaults. Disabling Shear, Rotation, or Scale may save you a little tracking time, but you're unlikely to improve the track and may hurt it if you misjudge the motion of the surface you're tracking. Unless you're dealing with extremely fine motion, leave the motion type set to Large Motion. 
large motion actually also tracks small motion. Confusing, I know, but that's the deal. The last setting to look at is the min pixels used. Mocha uses this to decide what percentage of pixels to track in your search region. Mocha actually automatically sets this based on how big your search region is. A large search region will usually get 20% of pixels tracked. A small region will get 90% of its pixels tracked. Now, if your initial track doesn't look so great, try increasing the min pixels used to get a better track. It'll be a slower track, but slower tracking is a whole lot better than sloppy tracking. You can use all the extra time waiting for the track to finish to check your social media feeds. To start tracking, just click Track Forwards or Track Backwards. Doesn't matter which way you track first. Notice how even when part of the van disappears off screen, Mocha is still able to correctly track the rest of the planar surface we identified with our tracking shape. When the track's done, back up to the frame where you started the track and track in the other direction to track the entire timeline. For trickier tracks, you can click this button to track one frame at a time. If your track starts to change shape, stop by clicking the stop button if you're in continuous track mode. You'll see that the timeline turns blue for frames that you've tracked. The diamond on the timeline indicates a keyframe placed where you actually adjusted the position of the shape. Back up to the last good frame that tracked well. Once you're on a frame that you know tracked well, adjust the outline of the shape to improve the track. Try to eyeball what caused the track to go bad. Did part of the image change color dramatically? Did an object suddenly appear in front of the one you're trying to track? And we'll talk about garbage matting in a moment. Adjust the shape of the tracking region to avoid the pixels that are causing the trouble. Then track again. Very often, if Mocha starts to track poorly and you can't figure out why, it turns out to either be subtle reflections or subtle changes in the shadows falling across the surface. In such situations, either consider garbage matting out reflections or play with different positioning of the tracking region until you find one that tracks consistently from one frame to the next. Remember, you can also look at increasing your min pixels value. On tricky tracks, you may need to keep adjusting the tracking shape every frame or two to keep a good track. Be ruthless, though. A little bit of drifting can be catastrophic. If you can see the shape slipping, back up and keep tweaking until you get a good tracking region that locks from one frame to the next. You'll see that Mocha places a diamond-shaped keyframe every time you change the shape. You can jump between keyframes with these buttons. Now there's no shame in backing up to the last keyframe, changing the shape, then trying to track again. And again. And again. Better to spend time getting it right here than trying to deal with jitters and bumps in your tracking data later. So, we've been pretty lucky tracking the back of the van, but look what happens when it turns the corner and we need to track the side of the van. Annoying actors, extras, and lampposts get in the way. Anything that gets in the way of the subject needs to be garbage matted out. You can either import a mat from a file or create garbage mats right from within Mocha. Let's take a look at importing from a file first since it's unfortunately not at all straightforward. Let's pop out of Mocha and get some Roto. You can quit out of Mocha anytime as long as you save, everything will be waiting for you when you get back. First off, export the Roto as an 8-bit per channel grayscale image. Note, the area you want the tracker to avoid should be white in the mat and the area you want it to track should be black. Here we'll use the output of our handy auto rotoscoping tool. Check out our impossible shot on auto rotoscoping to find out how to use it. Being careful to invert it so the people are black and the rest of the shot is white. Back in Mocha, I'll double click to rename our track at the back of the van and then lock and disable the tracking process icon so that I don't accidentally track over the work we already did. I can also hide the layer since it has nothing to do with the track we're about to do on the side of the van. I also need to reset the in and out points for the new region of the clip I want to track. We need to create a dummy layer for the garbage mat. 
This is just one of the quirks of Mocha. Select the Create X-Spline tool, click to create at least three points, then right-click to finish the shape. Now we don't care about the shape of it because we're about to replace it. You'll see a new layer now appears above your current tracking shape in the layers list at top left. By the way, the properties tabs at lower left change to display the properties of whatever layer you have selected in the layers list. If the timeline or properties tabs are grayed out, it could be because you've accidentally selected a shape creation tool like the XSplane tool. Click back to the standard select tool to return to standard editing mode. Double click and rename the created layer. Here we'll call it People Roto. Now in the layer of properties, select import from the Mac clip menu. Depending on the version of the After Effects plugin you're using, this feature may not be supported. Locate the matte file or image sequence, select it, and then click import. You'll see a vague red outline around objects in the garbage mat. To see it more clearly, click the Show Layer Mats button. And create a tracking shape layer for the side of the van. Now the most critical part. Any layer you want to use as a garbage mat needs to appear above the layer you're tracking. If the shape layer you're tracking is above the garbage mat, drag it down below it. The easier way to create a garbage mat is to simply create one inside of Mocha. This actually makes use of the Mocha Planar Tracker and Shape Tools, so you're essentially performing a track in preparation for your main track. In this shot, we need to deal with the street light, since the imported track took care of the actors. First off, disable the process cogs for any other layers. Again, deactivating this icon tells Mocha not to track that layer during the next tracking operation. Now, since we're just using this lamppost shape as a garbage mat, we don't really care if the tracker goes off a little bit. Here, we'll just drag the control points of our shape to adjust for any drift. And I'll track back the other way to track the lamppost throughout the portion of the shot where it gets in the way of the van surface we're trying to track. When I'm done, I'll disable its tracking process icon to prevent my track from being accidentally changed. Okay, let's take a look at using these garbage mats during a track. Again, to reinforce this, make sure the layer you're tracking appears below the garbage mats. Then make sure the process icon is enabled for the layer that you are wanting to track and track away. You should find that the track happily ignores the garbage matted objects and tracks successfully. Now, a lot of times, Mocha's track will be dead on for your whole clip. But on tougher tracks, shots with a lot of motion blur or shifting shadows, the track will drift a little over time. Click on the layer you just tracked to highlight it. Click the Show Planar Surface button to reveal a rectangle inside your track shape. Here, you can choose four corners of a box that will be treated as the rectangle your compositing or motion graphics package will treat as the area being tracked. If you're working in Nuke, the shape of this box doesn't matter. Now in Fusion, which at the time of this recording lacks the ability to concatenate corner pins, you'll want to set this to the entire frame border at the frame you plan to do clean plating or paint work. In that specific instance, go to the frame you want to paint on in Fusion and choose Tools, Align Surface to automatically set the corners to the edges of the frame. Now for everyone else, just choose four locations that will be easy to compare at different frames in time. Here we'll choose corners on some of our tracked markers, like the inside of this V in the marker cross. To turn on a magnified view of the corner point you're editing, click here. When you're happy with the placement, then click over to the Adjust Track tab. Click Set Master All. Now move to an earlier frame in the timeline where all four points are still on screen. Drag the corners to adjust for any drift. Mocha will show you a magnified view of how the position of the corner looked at the frame where you set your master so you can help dial it in. If you want Mocha to take a guess at where it should be, and it usually guesses pretty well, choose one of the corners by clicking the bracket buttons and then click Auto. You can also use the up, down, left, and right buttons to nudge it into place. 
Click each of the four corner bracket buttons in turn to review and tweak or press auto. Now move to the end of your play range or the latest frame in the timeline where all four points are still on screen and repeat. And finally, scrub through the timeline, typically halfway between keyframes, and review and adjust positions if necessary. In the After Effects CC version of Mocha, to finish, just close Mocha. And in the Effects Controls pane, click Create Track Data to export the tracking data. Now here's the tricky bit. You need to click the gear icon next to the layer whose tracking data you want to import. Here we'll select our rear van track. Mocha immediately populates the four corner point values in the plugin list. You can also apply the corner pin to other layers by selecting the destination layer and clicking Apply Export. If you chose Source from the right side pop-up menu, it'll apply a corner pin effect to the source footage of the chosen layer. Now how about exporting from Mocha Pro? Select the layer you want to export, click the Export Tracking button, and then choose from the myriad of export options. As an example here, we'll choose a new corner pin to export. And finally, click either Copy to Clipboard or Save to File. Most of the time you'll just click Copy to Clipboard. Close Mocha, choosing to save in case you need to come back and tweak the track later, and press Ctrl V to paste the created corner pin into Nuke. Fusion works the same way. Regardless of the software you're using, the last step is to test the track. Even though most of the time you track an object so that you can match move other elements to it, it's a good idea to start out by stabilizing the tracked footage to make sure the track is good. Here in Nuke, we'll apply the corner pin as a stabilizer to the footage. We'll lock the nuke from values to a single frame, and then click invert to turn the match move effect to a stabilize effect. Now when you play back, if you see the surface you tracked starting to drift or jump suddenly, you know you need to go back into Mocha and retrack the problem section, then re-export the tracking data. And that's it. Congratulations. You are now a Mocha Tracking Guru.